I'm back. 2019 is officially over, but I'm back with another video. Start 2020 with a bang. I missed you guys. In all seriousness, 2019 was an awesome year for me, and I wanted to start 2020 off with a bang, so I'm gonna do 20 tips and tricks in After Effects for 2020. See what I did there? Okay, we're gonna start this list off with one of my favorites, and that is increasing the size of your points and handles. If you go into your preferences in general, it's the first option. You can increase this up to about 15, I think. It just makes seeing your points and handles a little bit easier. All right, moving on to the next one. This one is a time saver and it encourages you to stay organized and that is project templates. To create a project template, just open a new project, create your template with whatever folders that you need, then save that project anywhere. And then just go to your preferences, new project and find that project template. Now, whenever you open After Effects, you'll open it with this project template already set up, keeping you organized. Okay, so the next one is another time saver and that is the mini flow chart. Uh, you can access the mini flow chart by hitting tab and this shows you what compositions are in your current composition and what composition your current composition is in. So you can navigate through your project with ease. And this little blue line always shows you where you came from. All right, moving on to my next tip, and that is page up, page down to move frame by frame. Although if you're on a laptop like a MacBook, you can use command arrow keys to go frame by frame. Or if you're on a Windows laptop, that's control arrow keys. Now my next tip is if you are moving frame by frame, if you hit K, you can move from keyframe to keyframe. It's a little tip. All right, next one is Battle Axe's Overlord. This one is a game changer if you're using Illustrator files. With just one click, you can bring your Illustrator files into After Effects as shape layers. And you can bring them as one layer or you can split them up all into different layers. It's awesome. Okay, if you don't wanna fork over the money for Overlord and you wanna use Illustrator files the traditional way, and you bring your Illustrator file into After Effects and you scale it up and you see that it's pixelized, well, if you click on the continuously rasterized little button on the timeline, your Illustrator file will be smooth again. It's just a little tip for you. All right, sometimes you'll have several different layers that have keyframes on them and you need to move them all, but you don't want to have to go into each individual layer and move its position because there's already keyframes there and it's a lot of work and you have to do it for multiple layers and it takes a lot of time. Well, you can just create a null object, parent all the layers to that null object, move them to wherever you need them to go, and then delete that null object because you no longer need it. And no one will ever know. If your composition is too long, you can adjust the length of your composition by dragging the work area handles to the length that you want and then just right clicking on this little gray bar and trim to comp area trim to work area i think yeah trim to work area boom now you have a shorter composition now if you accidentally trimmed it too short well you can hit Control k to bring up your composition settings and then go down to the duration and adjust your length there Okay, if you want to stagger some animations, just select all the layers you want to stagger, cut them down to the number of frames you want to stagger them by, and then go to Sequence Layers, hit OK, and they're staggered. Then you can just extend them back out. And if you want them to stagger in the opposite direction, just before you do all that, select them in the opposite order. Okay, so we know the Pick Whip will parent a layer to another layer, but what if you want that layer to be in the exact same position as the layer you're parenting it to. Well, when you do drag the pick whip to that layer, make sure you're holding shift and that will snap your child layer to the parent layer's position. Okay, let's say you have a bunch of images in your timeline that you want to replace with an image from your project bin. Well, first select all the images on your timeline that you want to replace. Then in your project bin, select the image you want to replace them with and then drag that new image onto your timeline, onto the layers that you want to replace while holding Alt, and you'll replace the image in your layers with your new image. 
and it will retain all the keyframes and all the, the changes you made to that original image. Pretty nifty, right? An easy way to do quick shadows is to duplicate your layer, go to the effects and presets, search for CC slant, apply that effect to your new layer, and then turn off the stretching, and then just turn up the effect. And then you can go in and add a fill to make it a shadowy color. All right, so you have a layer that you've animated in and you wanna save time animating it out. Well, you can go and copy those first two keyframes, paste them, and then select them both, right click and do time reverse keyframes. And boom, you got your in and out animated. Time saved. Okay, this is an effect that I think doesn't get enough attention, but it's the transform effect. And if you apply it to your layer, it gives you a whole nother set of transform properties that you can animate. And one that I like is the skew property because you can apply this to text, turn up the skew, and now you've got this nice little slanted text effect. Okay, sometimes you've animated a layer, it has a bunch of keyframes, but it needs to either be quicker or slower, and you don't want to have to go in and individually adjust every keyframe. Well, there's a shortcut. You can select all the keyframes and then either clicking the last keyframe or the first keyframe while holding Alt, you can drag the keyframes to retime them. Okay, this is a website called coolers.co and it's a great website for just randomly generating different color schemes. If you're having a hard time knowing what color scheme you want, you can just cycle through color schemes until you find one that you like. Or if you have a color that you know you wanna use, you can put that into coolers and then lock that color and then you can generate a color scheme around that initial color. It's pretty cool and then you can export these color schemes and import them into your After Effects project and use them as a reference. Okay, next one is moving your mask with the spacebar. If you're drawing a mask and then you realize it's not in the right position, if you just hold down the spacebar before letting go of your mouse, you can actually move the mask position on your composition. And then once it's in the right position, you can let go of the spacebar and then continue, you know, resizing your mask if you need to resize it. Pretty nifty. Okay, if you're well organized, you color code your layers and there's a great way to select all the layers in a group and that is just by going to the layer label and then selecting group by color or select by group or whatever it says there, I can't remember. I don't have After Effects open right here. Okay, and the last one is another plugin from Battle Axe, but this one is free, but it saves you a lot of time. So let's say you have a bunch of different shape layers, a bunch of different strokes, and you want them all to be round cap. Well, traditionally you'd have to go into each individual layer and go in, into the stroke and go all the way down to round caps. Well, with butt capper, you can just select your layers and then select what kind of cap you want. Super easy, saves you a lot of time, especially when you have a ton of layers. All right, well, that is 20 tips and tricks for 2020 in After Effects. And uh, I had a really good 2019. I hope you guys did too. Uh, it was a year of a lot of growth and I became better as a motion designer and I'm excited for 2020 and continuing on that path. If you guys have any ideas for future tutorials, please leave those ideas in the comment section below. I read every comment that I get. And if you guys just want to tell me something, leave that comment in the comment section below. And if you guys like this video or specifically if you learned something new in this video, I would really appreciate it if you hit that like button. And if you like content like this and you want me to keep making this kind of stuff, make sure you hit that subscribe button to tell me. And if you do hit that subscribe button, make sure you turn on your bell notification so that you're notified whenever I come out with a new video yada 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 you know how the youtube works and again thanks so much everybody who has subscribed and has shown support i really do appreciate it 2020 is going to be a great year and we'll see you guys in the next video